If you have some mods from the 4.21 version of the Unreal Engine and you need to upgrade them to 4.24 now, this video is for you. This is a pretty simple process, but also a lot of things have changed. If you're making new mods, check out the new videos I've made on how to work with the new preview file system. I made one for fixtures and one for car bodies. But anyway, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is update the SDK. However, there have been some issues with Steam not fully overwriting the old SDK files. So to counteract that, we need to find our SDK install folder, which will have a file path that looks something like this. Find where your Steam folder is installed and open it. Then navigate to Steam Apps and then Common. Your SDK is here. Let's go ahead and delete that now. If you have Steam running already, you may need to close it and kill it in Task Manager so it's not running in the background. Now we'll launch Steam fresh. Make sure we have tools ticked, find the Automation Workshop tool, and click the button that says either Install, Update, or Play. No matter what button is there, once you press it, Steam will figure it out and begin downloading the SDK. While that's downloading, let's go find our old mod folders. Now, these are not your cooked mods. They are the files Unreal is using in the game engine. The easiest way to find this is to open the Unreal Editor, find your mod, right-click, and select Show in Explorer, and Unreal will open your file for you in Windows Explorer. From here, we can now navigate to the files location more easily. Now that we've found the files, let's copy them to the desktop. Or, it's not a bad idea to make a storage folder for these in case you need to come back to them later. Now let's go back to our old SDK project location and rename it and move it to a storage folder. I like to keep old SDKs in case I need to come back to them later. You may not have the storage space, so you can delete it if you must, but I recommend holding on to it until your mod conversions are completed, uploaded to the workshop, and verified to be working. Once the new SDK is downloaded, let's copy the SDK folder and move it to our dedicated location. For me, I keep it in a folder called dev on my C drive, but you can keep it in an alternate drive if you like, as long as it's on your system and not, say, a network-attached storage device on your network. It does need to be placed locally on your computer. Now let's select all our plugin files we copied earlier to our desktop and copy them. Now I'll open up my SDK folder, open up the automation game folder, and now the mods folder. From here on out with 4.24, we won't be using the plugins folder. There is now a dedicated mods folder. Let's paste our old mods in here now. It's time to launch the Unreal Editor. If you haven't done so already, install Unreal 4.24.3 now. I keep my installs in the same dev folder as I keep my SDK files. Here you can see I have both 4.21 and 4.24 installed. If you need more guidance on how to install the new editor, reference my video about how to do that in the Information tab. When you launch the editor, you may need to point it to the correct automation project. Just browse for it in the SDK location we copied earlier, and you'll find it inside the Automation Game folder where it's always been. With the editor open, it may be in its default state, so we might have to extend the Content Browser and ensure Show Plugins is ticked. In the Content Browser, ensure your mod folders have appeared. If so, go ahead and attempt to cook them now, like you've always done, by going to Share Mod, and select the mod in the list you want to share. Make sure you're sharing it to a dedicated folder for each mod. Don't cook all your mods into the same folder as they'll overwrite each other. Before we move on, some troubleshooting steps if you got a failed cook. If your mod cooked successfully, just skip ahead in the video. First, let's find our editor mod in Windows Explorer. Make sure the mod isn't buried inside a folder with its own name like this example here, or that you don't have a couple mods inside one folder. 
dig each mod out individually, you want that folder that holds the content, resources, and new plugin file, and paste that into the SDK mods location like we did earlier. If that's not the issue, another potential area to look for is if you have two uplugin files in one mod. Each mod should have only one uplugin file ins inside it. If you have two, delete the incorrect one, as in, in this example, you would delete the example rim uplugin file. Back to the editor, if you're still having problems, navigate to the preview file and open it. There are a few things that can go wrong here to cause this. Let's cover the easy ones first. First, make sure you don't have a GUID conflict. If there are any other mods or vanilla fixtures that share GUIDs with your mod, you may need to resolve that first by either changing your GUIDs or removing any conflicting assets you might have in other mods. Second, make sure you didn't rename your mod folder outside of the Unreal Editor. If you copied your mod somewhere for safekeeping and changed the name, that can break the whole mod. You'll want to launch the old editor, fix your mod, make sure it can cook a mod in the old editor, then try again without renaming the folder. If none of that helped, we may have more serious issues. There are some circumstances where converting an old mod just doesn't work, but I'm going to show you some workarounds for most of them now. Let's pick up at the point where we just opened the editor with the old mod we are trying to convert. I'll open the mod folder and drill down until I get to where the blueprint used to be, and it should be gone. I'll drill down further to the thumbnails folder and open up the thumbnail preview file. This is where we can see our trouble begin. There is no skeletal mesh assigned to the skeletal mesh field. There are no bone constraints, and we are missing most, if not all, of our dimensional data. If you're doing a fixture mod, it'll look more like this, with just missing assets and GUID and whatnot, but the steps going forward will be mostly the same. But I'll focus on car body mods since there is more information to them that needs to be rescued. Back to the preview file, I'm going to scroll down until I find the Path Legacy Classes field. The dropdown should be populated with your blueprint. If not, you can try opening up the dropdown and searching for your blueprint, but if it's not there, it's just lost. Unreal can't find it, and there's really nothing we can do about it at this point. You will just have to start over, and this is an unfixable bug buried deep inside the Unreal Engine. However, if the field is populated, you are in luck. We have ways where we can save this mod. If you click on the little magnifying glass icon, it will reveal your blueprint and take you to the folder where it is. The next thing I'm going to do is navigate back to the thumbnails folder and just delete the preview file and thumbnail. If we don't, we will end up with extras and we won't be using these two anyway. Now we can navigate back to our folder that holds the blueprint and I'll click in the 3D viewport and press Ctrl O to launch the open level menu and I'll search content for car and now I can launch the thumbnail generator level car. Now, in the world outliner, I'll search for BLU to narrow down the list to the element I need, and I'll start simulating. Now I can click on the body edit scene blutility, and if I scroll down just under the default menu, there is a legacy classes menu. Let's select the blueprint, and I'll press this little arrow here to assign the blueprint to the variant class input field. Then, just below that, I'll add an array element and assign the blueprint to the variant class list in the same way by pressing the little arrow. Don't forget to tick the Load Legacy Derived Classes checkbox. Now we can press the Load button and load the car into the scene. If you click on the body, you should see all the bone constraints you previously set. Now, back to the Blutility, I'm going to hit the Update and Save button. If I navigate back to my Thumbnails folder, we will see a newly generated preview file, thumbnail, and mesh data file. Let's open up the preview file and take a look at what we have. We need to inspect it for all the data and make sure we got everything. Looks like the skeletal mesh was assigned. GUIDs are set, all of our dimensional data is in place, 
However, in this instance, we didn't get any of our bone constraint data. While this is annoying, it's not difficult to fix. What I'm going to do is go back to the blueprint and open it up. Now, I don't need to stop simulating to do this since we aren't editing the blueprint. I'll just open the full blueprint editor by double clicking here, and over on the left, I'll select the car body mesh inherited object. Now over to on the right, you may need to expand the mesh and bone constraint tabs. You will see all your bone constraint data. We can just mouse over the words bone constraints, right click and copy. Then navigating back to our preview file, we can simply mouse over the bone constraints section, right click and paste. And there, all our bone constraints, magic. Now let's navigate over to our legacy classes menu and uncheck load legacy derived classes. Then select the preview file. Load it into the variant asset field in the default menu by pressing the little arrow button. And let's press the load body button. Then press the update and save button one last time. Let's inspect our preview file one last time and make sure it's all good to go. All that's left to do now is cook the mod. Those are all the problem areas I'm currently aware of. If you're still having trouble cooking your mod, sign into the official automation discord and report it so we can help you out. Once we have our mods cooked, we should test them before we publish to the workshop. Let's navigate to the folder that holds our freshly cooked mod and open it up. We'll want to open up Windows No Editor, Automation Game, Mods. The folder here is your cooked mod. Let's copy that folder. Now we need to figure out where it goes. The file path is similar to the way it was before, but instead of the plugins folder, we will use the mods folder. The file path will be something like Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Automation, UE 4.24, Automation Game, Mods. Put your mod inside the mods folder here. If for some reason you don't have a mods folder, make one. Now let's launch the game through Steam. When the launcher option window pops up, let's select the No Launcher option. Now navigate through the game and verify your mod has arrived, and it's working. If it's not, review the previous troubleshooting steps or come ask for help on the official Automation Discord. Once you're satisfied your mods are working as intended, you can publish them to the workshop. Just launch the Publisher Workshop tool from Steam and update your mod from your list of mods on the left. Don't forget to delete the mods you just manually inserted into the mods folder so you can subscribe to them on the workshop and verify their functioning through Steam as well. To play with your subscribed mods, you'll launch the game with the regular launcher option. And that'll do it. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments below, ask in the official Automation Discord server, or on the official Automation forums. If you found this video helpful, give it a like! and hit the subscribe and bell buttons for more useful videos to help you through your automation modding journey. See you next time!